One of the most common questions I get from my clients is what happens next? Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. One of the most common questions I get from my clients is what happens next? So that's the whole point of this video. In this week's video, I'm gonna give you a full complete picture of the home buying process. Everything from the moment you decide you're gonna buy a house to the day you close and get the keys and become a homeowner. Now I'm not gonna dive too deep into each step specifically, mostly because I have videos on almost all of these topics already available on my channel. And whatever I don't have a video on now, I guarantee there will be one in the future. This is really just meant to give you a full broad spectrum of what happens in what order. So let's get started. Once you've made the decision to purchase a home, really the first step in your process should be to partner with and choose a real estate agent to represent you in the transaction. It's important that you build this relationship early on in the process. You see, our job is to guide you through the process, answer the questions as you go, and really point you in the right direction and save you time and headache in the long run. After you've partnered with an agent, the next step is to decide how you're gonna purchase the home. Are you gonna be getting financing or are you paying cash? If you're getting financing, well then now's the time you wanna meet with a lender and start the pre-approval process. If you're paying cash, you wanna get your proof of funds ready to go. You see, it's important that once you find and select the home that you wanna move forward on, you have to have either your pre-approval letter or your proof of funds ready to go to submit with your offer. So take care of this early on. This will also help guide you in determining what the right budget is for you. Now here comes the fun part. Now you're gonna sit down and you're gonna figure out what are your needs and wants in your home. What does your budget look like? What area are you looking to move to? and what's available that meets your needs. You're then gonna narrow down the available properties and you're gonna go out and you're gonna see them. Now, once you're out and you've seen all the homes that are available and you've chosen the perfect home for you and your family, you're gonna make an offer on the property. You're gonna analyze what's going on in the market. You're gonna look at other comparable homes and you're gonna work with your agent to determine what is a fair offer on the property. Your agent's gonna then draft that offer into a purchase contract and submit that over to the seller side. Now, the seller has three options when they get an offer. They can either accept the offer as is, they can reduce it or they're going to counter offer you back. If they counter offer you back, then you also have those th same three options. You can accept, reject, or counter them back. This is what we call negotiating. Then once the negotiation is completed and both sides have come to agreeable terms on the contract, the actual physical contract is going to be revised to match the agreed upon terms and sent to both parties to sign. The contract is not actually executed until it's signed by both sides. Congratulations, you now have an accepted offer. So what happens next? Will the attorneys get involved? So here in New Jersey, it is not required that you use an attorney to represent you in the transaction. However, it is strongly recommended. And here in central New Jersey, it's very common practice. So you as the buyer, if you don't already have an attorney that you'd like to use or know about, this is the time when you're going to select the attorney to represent you. We have three days from the time the contract is executed to get it into the attorney's hands to kickstart something called the attorney review process. Now the attorney review process can take one day, can take two days, can take a week, can take two weeks. But basically what happens is each attorney will review the contract and they will have specific changes to the contract that they would like to make. In essence, they're rejecting the contract as it stands with changes. This is very common practice. So any changes your attorney wants to make to the contract, they'll communicate to you. And any changes that are coming from the seller side from their attorney will go to your attorney and to you. There will be no changes made to the contract that you don't know about or have agreed to. So now let's say both sides have made whatever changes they want to make to the contract and now we're all in agreement again. The attorney is going to send out a letter stating that attorney review has now concluded. What that means is that you are now officially under contract. Congratulations again. So now let's talk about all the things that happen during the under contract phase of the transaction. So the first thing you want to do when attorney review ends is you're going to get in touch with your lender and you're going to start the full mortgage application process. Before you've probably only done the pre-approval with them. Now you want to start the full official application process with them. And you want to start that right away because that really takes the longest part of the entire transaction. So get that started now. Now, at the same time that you started your application process with a lender, you're also going to be scheduling your inspections. This is when you're going to do your full home inspection and any other inspections that would apply to the property. So for example, in our area, some other common inspections are things like doing an oil tank sweep. Um, if there's a pool, you want to get a pool inspector out. Um, if there's a septic system, getting the septic in inspected. All of those inspections, anything relating to the property, now's the time that you want to go ahead and get those scheduled. 
you're going to work with your agent to coordinate all of that because you need to be there, they need to be there, and they need to coordinate it with the seller side, especially if the property is occupied to make sure it works with everybody's schedule. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the inspection process specifically, because I have um, a series of great videos around that for both sides and talking about what it is, but the overall gist of the process is this. You schedule your inspections, you then get an inspection report, you review the report and if there's any repairs you'd like to request from the seller side, you're going to coordinate those repairs through your attorney. They're going to send an official repair letter over to the seller side. And then you're going to negotiate those items back and forth with the seller and come to terms on what they will or won't um, repair or whether or not a credit is going to be offered. So if there's any major repairs, coordinate with your agent and the seller side to find out when the repairs are done so that you can get in and get eyes on them and make sure that you're good to go. Now, technically the seller has up until the day of closing to finish the repairs because they do still own the property, but I always encourage them to get it done as early as possible just so that we don't have any last minute delays. Once you're through all of your inspections and you've come to terms and you know that everything there has been resolved, you're gonna be moving forward with the transaction, then you're gonna let your lender know and they're gonna order the appraisal. The reason we don't order the appraisal at the same time as the home inspection is because each of these things cost you money. And we wanna make sure at every step of the way that we're trying to do things in the correct order to try to save you some money. If for any reason, you know, something really terrible came up at the home inspection and you're not gonna be moving forward with the transaction, well, we certainly wouldn't want you to pay for an appraisal on that property. So we're gonna get through the inspection, we're gonna make sure that's all good, then we're gonna have your appraisal order and you're gonna pay for that. Once your appraisal comes back and as long as that all looks good, then your attorney's gonna order what we call title work. Title work is your title search first and then your title insurance order. Now at the same time that your title work is happening, you're probably gonna be getting something called a mortgage commitment letter from your lender. This means you've gone through the underwriting process and they've approved your loan. Sometimes there are conditions on the mortgage commitment letter, like they might need one more document, from you or something to be clarified. So you just wanna review that when you get it and make sure there's no outstanding conditions on there. If there are, take care of those right away. And I will also say throughout this entire process, because I didn't dive too much into the mortgage application process, process specifically, at any point through the home buying process, if your lender needs any information from you or any documents, you really wanna get them what they're asking right away or as quickly as possible. Now, if your lender asks you for the same thing a couple of times, that's okay, it can happen. Sometimes they need the same document, but they need an updated version. For example, if you gave them past bank statements and they need new updated bank statements, um, just know that this is all normal and a part of the process. And the sooner you can get them those documents, the more likely you are to be able to stay on track for your original closing date. Now, the last few steps of the process all kind of happen at the same time but I'm gonna go through them in one of the more common orders. Now at this point in the transaction, the seller is going to get something called a certificate of occupancy or a CO, you might hear it called. Um, it's a common term in our area. Now every town is different. Sometimes it's just a fire inspection. Sometimes it's a full town inspection. But in most cases, this is the responsibility of the seller. And all towns in New Jersey at least require a fire inspection before a property ownership transfers to somebody else. So the seller at this point is gonna work with the township on this process. Now if the home you're purchasing has actual property associated with it, not a condo, let's say a detached home, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you got a property survey, and this is typically ordered around this time. And if you've gotten to this point in the transaction and nobody has mentioned a survey to you, then this is when you would start asking about it. You just wanna make sure that you are clear on exactly where the property lines are. You're also gonna be shopping for homeowner's insurance. Now you have to pay for the first year of homeowner's insurance up front, and then after you close on the property, every mortgage payment you make, a little portion of that's gonna go into an escrow account to cover your homeowner's insurance for next year. But you do have to pay the first year ahead of time, and now's the time when you're gonna shop around for that, and you're actually gonna to have to show proof of the homeowner's insurance to the lender if you're getting financing to be able to close. Now this brings us right up till right before closing. Now at this point in the transaction, everybody's really gonna be working very closely together to make sure that we can get the closing date and time confirmed. Your lender and your closing coordinator actually have to have all the final disclosures and final figures out to both sides three days prior to closing. These documents not only have to be sent out three days prior, but they actually have to be acknowledged by both sides three days prior. So at this point, the disclosures are being sent and your closing day is being confirmed. I may not have mentioned this in the beginning, but when you go under contract initially, we always put a target closing date on the contract. And I got asked a lot, 
is that set in stone? And the reality is it's it's not. There's so many things that happen throughout the transaction that could cause some sort of a delay that that is always just a target date. So when we get to this part of the process, that date is really firmed up at this point. And your attorney typically communicates that date with you. Once we have the closing date confirmed, then your buyer's agent is going to confirm with the seller side all the correct utility company contact information so that you can make arrangements to have the utility switched over to your name starting on the day of closing. Now, regardless if you've been back to the property for repairs or not, really the last step before closing is to do a final walkthrough. You want to get eyes on the property right before closing. You see, once you close, it's yours. And if there's any problems or new damage or something that wasn't repaired that was supposed to, once you close, it becomes your problem. So I like to schedule the closing, if I can, to do it the day of closing. So a lot of times I'll go do the final walkthrough with my clients and then we'll head right to closing, assuming everything is okay. If you allow too much time between the final walkthrough and closing, well, then you're just taking a chance on something happening to the property before you take ownership. And we don't want that. Now, once you've done the final walkthrough, you're going to head to the closing. Closings typically take place at your um, attorney's office, but they can also be scheduled at the title company's office or even at your real estate agent's office. So just make sure your team communicates with you exactly where closing's set to take place. Now, you're going to go to closing. You're going to sign a lot of documents. We like to say you're going to sign your life away. And congratulations, you are now a homeowner. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't really dive too deep into each step specifically. Again, because most of them I already have videos like inspections, appraisals, surveys, things like that. Um, so go ahead and check out any of the other videos on my channel if you want to dive deep into each of the steps specifically. If there is a step in this process that I don't have a video on and you've got some more questions on it, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to answer any of them. And keep an eye out for future videos because I will make sure to have a video for each step in the process posted in the future. If you're a buyer or seller out there in Central New Jersey or you just really love learning about the area. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every Monday. I'll see you next week.